Good morning everybody. Today a quick one. How do I see the connection between Tai Chi, Qigong and archery? And here is my take on it, but it's simply my personal private view. So let's start. First of all, we go from the outside to the inside. Or what helped me in my archery because I did Tai Chi is understanding that the body acts as one unit. It's not like you stand there and the hands are moving. It's you stand there and you understand that when one part of the body is moving, the whole body is moving. And when one part of the body stops, the whole body stops. So everything starts at the same time and ends at the same time. So it's not like I stand there and do something mechanically separated like a robot. I simply, everything works as a unit, the whole body. And through Tai Chi, you get this experience of your whole body and you can apply, or at least I apply it to archery too. Then everything is here one unit because then you build up this structure from the inside. So it's not like. So then everything you start from the floor and you go up. I said when one part of the body moves, the whole body is moving. This is one of these principles I like a lot. Of course, if you do Olympic or bow hunting might vary, but how I shoot in my way of instinctive with thumb release or three fingers, doesn't matter, or Slavic, I always include my whole body. So it's full body draw, so to say. The next point is that the, every motion comes from, they say from the Dantian, from this energy center in Japan, they call this Hara. So even in Kyoto, every movement comes out of the, out of the energy center. I like this idea and then again it's not when you apply this it's not your hands they do the job it comes from the inside so it comes from your body through the shoulder through the elbow through the hand and there is this nice um, the snake hands I explained it once in a video a while ago that you really start first when you push the shoulder the elbow the hand when you go back the same, the shoulder starts, elbow follows, hand follows. So it's not the hand goes forward and backwards, it's shoulder, elbow, hand, shoulder, elbow, hand. With the other hand too, shoulder, elbow, hand, shoulder, elbow, hand. And this principle of the motion, the movement from the inside, same then applied in archery. So it's not like you stand there and your hands, so I need to bring this hand here. It's again, shoulders, elbows, hands in this order. And then you get this, the internal structure, you get it done. I like words, but once you do it, you understand it, then it comes from the inside. Then it's way easier because it, again, you engage your whole body more easily which makes your life as an archer easier and it feels so much more natural that you don't separate the hands from everything else and simply shoot your bow you use your whole body uh, one step further is this being rooted you know in one in, in this internal arts martial arts they always talk about the roots that you get roots energetic roots in the ground and you really can develop that and you really can experience that and then your stance is way more solid even if you stand only on one it doesn't matter you are simply way more solid and you use the sounds like again a little you use the energy of the earth you pick it up through your foot through your leg comes into your waist the waist controls it goes in your shoulder, elbow, uh, hand. And in this way, when you stand there and you're rooted, you can feel this. When you do your uh, full body draw, you feel this. It starts down there and it comes up and it ends in the tips of your fingers and in the end of the bow. So this is this experience like standing meditation and all these things Sang Chuang, help you develop this route so you don't have to do a lot you simply stand like this for an hour or two uh, and you develop this route of and then we come to the next point muscles or force of muscles versus energy in the tendons or how do you tendons i think yes so 
a frog cannot jump that far because he has so much muscles on his legs. He used this springy motion of his tendons. He compressed them and he stretches them and this makes him jump that far. And this is one principle you have in in Tai Chi too, or in, in its internal martial arts, where this is Fa Ching, where you have this whoo. You can't do this with muscles, so you can't <clears throat> you can't do this with muscles. It comes from the springiness of your of your ligaments, and you can apply this force through the ligaments and not your muscles to your archery. Even in Kyodo, they say. It's bone work, so you don't think about what your muscles are doing. Because when you think about your muscles, when you think about your hands, I did this in the video. When I think about, I bring my hand back, this muscle is working. When I think about, I bring my elbow back, this muscle is working. So I don't think about my muscles because otherwise, you I tense up and I or whatever. I use this as a Saint Japan. You can do this as a bone work that you think about what are my bones doing. And then your muscles know what to do, so you don't need to think about... <sighs> you know, don't need your muscles. And then with Tai Chi practice you get this muscle tone more refined in your body. So whatever you do, everything is more in this muscle tone. There are no, no gaps in your form. So everything is, is one, so there is not that the shoulder is loose or the elbow is loose and then when you use this internal strength, I call it now, then your body becomes a bow. Then everything is connected, is joined together, and your body becomes a bow. And again, it's way more efficient to use the whole body like this because it's not so exhausting. When I stand there, I pull my bow and the rest is loose, you're not going to work. So when my body is one unit, as we had before, through this muscle tone in the tendons, way more efficient and it's so much more fun, it, it really is. And then of course you can't talk about Tai Chi or internal arts without talking about breathing and I did some videos about this too, how to breathe and what helps that you learn in Tai Chi. You breathe in to your energy center down there and you breathe out and you do this very relaxed so you don't even hear the breath whatever you do you don't hear your breathing but you have this muscle tone is working but you're relaxed and this way of breathing you can apply obviously to archery and then through breathing first of all you get the rhythm in your shooting inhale 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 Exhale, 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 exhale. Inhale, 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 exhale, exhale. So you get your rhythm and you know how to breathe down there in your belly. Make your belly stiff. Gives you again way more control over bone error. So this is a principle from Tai Chi, which you can easily apply to archery. So breathing. And the next thing is through these internal arts or yoga or meditation, you get this body awareness. And you can directly see when we have a new student at the range and he had an idea of any kind of martial art and you tell him something, he simply knows what to do because he's aware of his body. We have others, you tell them, listen, your left hand here, what is my left hand? You get more aware, that's an extreme example obviously, but you get more aware of your body and you're more attentive, the attentiveness, I think it's called. So you, you are in your body and how do you get in your body? You simply turn your five senses inwards. You will still hear, but you don't listen. You will still look at something, but you don't stare at it. So you simply turn your five senses in. You don't judge anything which comes in. And then you're simply in your body, in your energy field, and you do whatever you have to do. And it gives you, like, like if you're in your own small universe, and once you experience this, of course you can apply it then to archery and even all this target panic all this in a competition, all oh, the others are looking at me, I need to, I need to. 
will disappear because you will turn your five senses inwards and with this you simply completely shoot on your own no matter what the circumstances outside of yourself are and that's incredible and the last part is this monkey mind you with all these whatever you do tai chi or standing meditation is really nice for it yoga sitting meditation you get your monkey mind under control and this is a thing you can't estimate it much enough i don't know if this was not proper english don't overlook this i have many people they stand there then they look at the target and they are not even capable of looking at one point for a few seconds they look there and the eye jumps again and this eye movement simply follows this monkey mind the monkey mind is always oh look here look there oh i heard that oh look there they look there and then you're completely hey, what 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 and how can you expect that eye hand coordination and your connection from eye to target will work when you don't look there so this monkey mind gets calm and you overcome it one day once you practice enough your internal arts then at least you know to a certain extent how to control your monkey mind and then you're capable of looking at the target pointing drawing shooting without even blinking and without staring at the target and without looking away even for a split of a second happens many people they stand and almost in photo and then the eye wanders somewhere and goes back to the target and then they don't shoot properly it's your monkey mind get it under control there are different ways there's even the bridge method where you count your breath and uh, one two thousand interesting things but they help develop this calmness in you and when your mind is calm your body can work properly so these are the things they work for me and these are now at least a few things that come in my mind when i think about tai chi and archery now let's think the other way around archery can archery help in your tai chi i think yes as i said before with the snake arm or with all these moves in tai chi you never have anything there of course when you do push hands you have the the, the opponent uh, but you, you still don't apply a lot of pressure, you simply follow, you yield and... Mm. But here then you feel the principle. So when I use now here this shoulder elbow hand, when I first use it like shoulder elbow hand, it feels nice, you know, nice uh, concept, nice in my mind. But you take a bow in your hand and now you see shoulder elbow hand and now you feel the resistance you feel the pressure against it and then you get more this idea what it means shoulder elbow hand so even archery to a certain extent not a lot can get you a little more understanding of what you're doing in your tai chi practice then you know you can apply everything your full body draw breathing exhale 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 shoulder elbow hand and then everything happens naturally and this is a benefit you get when you practice internal arts in my case a bit tai chi and you apply this to your archery and that's already it to all what i have today i hope that the camera was today in focus thank you very much for watching catch you in the next one